Roz Shalkutali. And very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. And uh, on the day, probably, that most people realize just how bad this uh, latest crisis, I call it the taxation crisis, uh, is. They must have seen their pay slips. And um, to discuss this, who better than the CEO of PwC PricewaterhouseCoopers, Mr. Sujiva Mudilige. Very good evening to you. Good evening, Faraz, and thank you for inviting me. Absolute pleasure. Can I ask you this question? Can Sri Lanka tax its way out of trouble? So far as, as it stands now, I'm surprised actually that this piece of legislation got through parliament in the first place. Mm. Either the parliamentarians at that time didn't realize the gravity of this. That's first possible option. Mm. Second one, they were simply not bothered or they, were, they, they didn't care, right? Mm. Or the third one is that this is simply what IMF wants us to do. So I don't know. So it could be a combination of these reasons. Otherwise, I simply cannot understand yeah. how uh, we've adopted some of these recent uh, tax changes. Uh, 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 Mr. Mutilige, uh, perhaps Parliament passed this because I'm going to ask you this other question just now, and then we'll get into equally serious things. Um, the values for non-cash benefits, all right? It says here, values of benefits for, from any residence provided by the employer. If your monthly remuneration is less than or equal to 200,000, you would pay between either 20,000 or 12.5% of the remuneration, whichever is less. In an unrated area, it's 15,000 or 10%. And estate bungalows, it's 10,000 or 7.5% of remuneration. Now, this is fine. What about ministers who are given housing? The president actually has two houses. God knows why he's got a house, the presidential palace, Right, which they've spent so much of money renovating and so on, uh, including a pool. And why on earth he has to go and live in another house as well? To me, it's uh, if you're tightening your belts, then that's where you need to start. And if you don't want to live at home, which you can't now, okay, have one house. Now, are they subject? Are, are they a special, different breed of people? Do they not have to pay tax? So I think, in my view, they shouldn't be. But at the moment they are a special breed of people. The reason is this. If you look at a average parliamentarian, say an MP in the opposition, right. I was told that each and every MP today, with all their allowances, what they get, they get about 350,000 rupees per month. Right. That constitutes the basic salary, which is about 60,000. Right. They get office allowance, I was told it is about 100,000 rupees. Right. They get a telephone allowance, they get a fuel allowance, they get a driver, they get a couple of vehicles. I mean, all these benefits are given to them because of the fact that they are an elected parliamentarian. Hmm. So that, that is, I mean, that's similar to if, if, my, if my office gives me uh, any benefit. A because, package of 300. 60,000. Yeah. And all, all that will be added up. So simple as that. But at the moment, I believe they are special type of people because why I say that is from what I gather, uh, I believe it was last week that at one of the parliamentary committee meetings, mm. uh, it was mentioned that less than half the people, half the parliamentarians yeah. out of 225 actually yeah. have tax files. Yeah. And that's a shocking number, to be honest. So, uh, in that sense, I believe they are, uh, uh, they are uh, privileged people. It, it also goes to say that the value of any place of residence should be considered as inclusive of any security, housemaid, servants, laundry, etc. Here's another point, and, and, and you know, this is to do with cars. It says here the value of benefit to an employee from the fully or partly private use of any motor vehicle should be the market value or value specify as follows where the market value is not ascertainable. And it goes on about vehicle is 20,000 rupees if it's less than 1800 cc. By the way, most of these vehicles are less, not less than, it's more than. And so if it's more than 1800 cc fuel or hybrid or petrol or diesel, 35,000. 10,000 for the driver and a fuel allowance of 30,000. 
How many of these parliamentarians are paying this? So that's the issue, uh, Farad. You know, I, I mean, it's the president. He's, he's got about, probably got about 15 to anything between 15 and 30 cars without the security backup. Is he paying this? Yeah, so all these uh, parliamentarians and including some of the senior government servants, as you know, Farad, as you quite rightly mentioned, they get a lot of non-cash benefits. They get official bungalows, they get security, they get uh, drivers, they get peons, they get, uh, you know, I mean, all kinds of non-cash benefits are made available to them. So all that, under the current legislation, all that needs to be taxed. Who, who, who prepares your salary and signs off your, your salary? So in my office, yeah. I have a finance team, right. and they are completely in control. I have no say. They know exactly what benefits uh, I We've get. We've got someone like that here. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. J. Mrs. J. She, she makes sure that it's all deducted. It's all added up. Uh, oh, you think us. she adds it all up as well? Yeah. It has to be added up. So the problem now for us is that, see, you and I are in the formal sector. So yeah. when you are in the formal sector, you are already within the tax net. The biggest issue is there are a lot of people who are outside the formal sector, who are outside the net. So if you don't bring them in, yeah. you and I will be taxed not at 36%. Don't be surprised if it goes to 50%. Um, I just want to go back to this value of transport business because it says it talks about a motor vehicle. But unfortunately, I don't know how the tax man works this out. But uh, there are things called helicopters, which are you know, frequently used by uh, uh, chief executive, the, the president, and I dare say various others too, uh, and sons of presidents as well. You know, they, they made um, lovely trips, round trips to Tangol, uh, just to go and play a spot of rugby, uh, do a couple of meetings, come back, you know. Uh, I wonder if any of these people have actually got tax files and whether they've declared their benefits. So Do, is this, is, does this happen? So that's why, Farad, I, I believe, I mean, in your long career, I'm sure you have interviewed hundreds of politicians. Yeah. I hope when they come next time, I hope your first question is, do you have a tax file? Actually, actually uh, uh, we're going to tell our producers, um, Shan Rantunga and Harshna, that uh, that should be the first question. If any politician comes in here, let's ask them the question, have you got a tax file? A simple yes or no will, su will suffice, wouldn't it? Really? Absolutely right. We don't want to know their number or no, how much don't. taxes. No, no, we don't want Just to Just be honest I mean, and We don't truthful. want to know what kind of watch they wear and how they got the watch. We'll leave that to the Thai Deputy Prime Minister. But, you know, <laughs> uh, but, but, but listen, now, now then, the biggest problem, of course, is the fact that Sri Lanka doesn't have enough revenue. Isn't that the problem? Absolutely spot on. So, so, so <laughs> what, what's the plan? They, these people have got no plan. If there's no plan... Every year, they'll be asking us to pay more tax, the, the people who are in the net. Correct, for us. So over the years, what has happened is, as you know, due, due to wrong policies, uh, the tax revenue has started coming down. At some point, I mean, we, we all have to pay more taxes. I mean, there's no doubt on that, right? right. But the issue is this. There are, two point, there are two issues on this. One, why aren't people willing to uh, are not willing to pay this amount of tax first one is yes. that there is no transparency you want to know what's happening with your tax Number absolutely one. i quite agree with that right that's f that's the first point second point is that any tax system for us has to be just and equitable and fair and when you know that there is a large thriving black economy uh, people who are employed in the informal sector, that they are entirely out of this tax net. And you feel, you feel, uh, uh, I mean, you're not happy. No, you're not um, happy. You're rather put simple, out, as, uh, simple as that. I should say. So that's the issue. Yes. And, and the other thing, uh, Faraz, that we need to keep in mind, yes. why are people protesting today is the reason is we need to keep, in, uh, we need to understand that over the last eight months, yeah. I mean, cost of living has gone up 100, minimum 100%. I, I don't think you can buy anything uh, there's any product or service which has not doubled in price since uh, 12th of April, the day, yeah. we, the way, the day we defaulted uh, on our debt. Indeed. Right? And the other thing uh, is that as, as, as a uh, formal sector fixed income employee, I mean, you would have got a salary increase of 10 or 15 percent. And your, and your expenditure has gone up virtually 100 percent or more. Yeah. And now on top of that, and your taxes have gone up and you are paying 
and, and a very high 36 percent. I mean, let's compare some of these rates with what happens in the rest of the region. Mm. I mean, we are a complete outlier on the rates. But uh, I, I want to tell the story about the, 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 the small onions. Uh, in Jaffna, uh, two, two or three days ago, it was 500 rupees a kilo. Um, but in Oct September, October, uh, I paid 240 rupees a kilo. And the same day that I was, to I was told and I paid for it at 500 rupees a kilo, I went into a um, rather well-known supermarket here and um, I was shocked. It was 980 rupees. So, you know, in the space of three months, this blessed thing shot up so much, you know. So I, I think we'll have to not eat so many onions now. But the revenue is 145 billion. This is uh, estimated. Expenses are, wait for it, 625 billion. So um, the deficit is more than your revenue. It's 480 billion. Where's the plan to to rein this in. How, how about the army? When we were talking before we started, the army. If you if you make half the army uh, part time or you know stay at home because we've we don't we're a pretty safe country now you know and there's all this business about it's not safe and all that. It's just only it's only when a certain family are coming along and their 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 popularity dips that the security situation gets sort of spoken about. If you kept the army at home, uh, think if you kept about half of them, what do you think? Do you think we'll save about fifty billion? Yes, in their the, food and things. Oh, correct. So, so just to give you some uh, context into that, so mm. the uh, so the budget allocation for defence for two thousand and uh, uh, two thousand and twenty-three yeah. uh, is uh, about. 500 billion in total right or if not more because there you have to add the internal security as well right but for us we need to keep in mind the recent judgment on the Easter Sunday attack clearly showed us yeah right even if we had doubled the manpower yes. and he I mean I th I believe we have about 120,000 people in the police now yeah. say you had 200,000 people in the police yeah when you read the judgment you clearly know, even if even if the number of policemen were double that amount, mm. that attack would have still taken place. Indeed. So higher the number doesn't mean you're more secure. No, absolutely not. It doesn't mean that at all. And there is a story that still needs to be told about that. Um, some parliamentarians allude to it, uh, and uh, the Cardinal, uh, his eminence, is not very happy, is he? And yet... The former president did call him and say, I'm terribly sorry, but I can't Im implement this because of something that he doesn't want to. So the evidence part of that report has never been put, been put out. I wonder why. You know, what are they hiding? <coughs> they are hiding these deficits. That's what they're hiding in the end of the day. Because they, they I mean, well, honestly, what, Mr. Budilege, what on earth can this country do should they start with the plan? So, so number one is that we need a plan, right? See, at the moment, I mean, we all need to realize we are a bankrupt nation. And I think the president has said it over and over again. I yeah. think the governor has said that as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, that we need, uh, each and every one of us has to understand that, right? Yeah. So to get out of this, and if we think we can get out of this, you know, as the politicians say, you know, by, I mean, they were saying end of last year, by end of this year, you know, by next year. I mean, that's all nonsense. I mean, it will not happen and we should not believe them. Simple as that. Because you just can't get out of this problem what we have because we have a huge issue. Just like you mentioned, mm. for the month of January 2023, yeah. our revenue is estimated at about 100 and say 150 billion. Yeah. Right. And your expenditure <coughs> is, about, is in excess of 600 billion. Yes. So, and you have you have a deficit anything from 450 to 500 billion it's between three and three and a half times your revenue absolutely so, so that's why we need to understand that's why we are a bankrupt nation so we need a plan as you said but I, the president says we've got no plan i've got no <laughs> forward plan he's doing a general ratner ladies and gentlemen you know you remember general ratner don't you absolutely you know he ruined his company because he he said that his products were all crap yeah, so, so the first thing, as you said, is that I hopefully this IMF deal we can sign on the dotted line, hopefully 
if not this quarter, maybe at least by, by the June quarter. I hope so. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the best thing that could happen. And then um, on top of that, as you may, so on this, on the fiscal side, uh, Faraz, see, they are collecting more and more taxes, right? But they are not cutting down expenditure. Well, absolutely. That's why I mentioned, you know, this uh, housing and the cars and so on and the fuel and the fuel. You know, they, they're, they're traipsing around all over the blessed country and they're not, they're giving away 30 acres here and there. What, what, what's 30 acres? We owe, I think our total, uh, total debt is around 52 billion US dollars. And that has gone up, far as you are spot on with the number, but that has gone up by another three or four billion because we, because we are very happy now because there are no queues today, yeah. but people have, uh, people have failed to understand why there are no queues, whether it's for the gas or whether it's for the fuel, is because the Indians gave us a further three or four billion dollars last year. Indeed. So that 52 is actually is, is up by another, another four or five now. And we, what did we do? We borrowed and we consumed. I wonder what uh, price, because there's nothing called a free lunch, is there? I wonder what uh, um, the Indians will extract from Sri Lanka. I have no idea. In what the name of friendship. Absolutely right. So I have no idea what, what took place or what transpired mm. when Minister Jai Shankar was here last week. I think only, uh, only they would know as to uh, what and, was agreed. And the carrot that I see that is being dangled is that, oh, well, we need the full implementation of the 13th Amendment. And that's, you know, they haven't been able to sort it out forever and a day. And it's not going to happen in the next month or two. It's all just talk. And it's all false promises. Ladies and gentlemen, on the issue of false promises, let's go for this promise which we can't keep, which is a break. We'll take a look at the headlines and then come back, all right, with Mr. Sujiva Mudilige, the CEO of PwC. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. News First. Headlines. Main sponsor. Durden's Hospital. Dedicated to you. Sri Lanka's public and private sector employees imposed with the highest monthly income tax in the country's history. Central Bank staff support black protest week. Central Bank governor says that painful decisions will have to be taken to protect the poorest in the country. President at Rhythm of Harmony concert to mark the 74th Republic Day of India. Armed gang steals cash deposit machines from Gampala Bank with over 7 million rupees. Authorities agree to revise their decision on power outages during a level period. Andra Kumara elaborates on its policies. News First Headlines Main Sponsor Durden's Hospital, dedicated to you. Experience the best in healthcare at Durden's Hospital's new Alfred Place Wing. We continue to evolve into a purpose-built hospital of the future, with an ambiance built to deliver world-class care. Durden's Hospital, dedicated to you. Experience the best in healthcare at Durden's Hospital's new Alfred Place Wing. We continue to evolve into a purpose-built hospital of the future, with an ambiance built to deliver world-class care. Durden's Hospital, dedicated to you. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Thank you very much and uh, welcome back to Newsline Live. Uh, and for your questions, 0772 300 305. SMS, WhatsApp, as you like. It's sad to see you all are breaking your heads about higher taxes. But on the other hand, the politicians responsible for the nation's bankruptcy are living in the lap of luxury. That was just one such message. There are several messages. More or less the same thing. Um, t tell me, uh, Mr. Mudlege, how on earth, where should we start? Should we start by trimming down this uh, bloated public service? I mean, there's no doubt on that. I think there has been, uh, I mean, a good thing about it is that some discussion has started, uh, which never took place, if you ask me, a few years ago. Would have not have been possible. 
So the public sector has to be pruned down. No, I mean, over 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 a period of time. I'm glad that the retirement age has been brought down from 65 to 60. I mean, uh, and even if someone says you need to bring it down to you need to bring it down further, maybe even that's something that needs to be uh, looked at. Mm. We are also retiring people from uh, army um, much earlier now. The option is there for them to retire, and I saw. Uh, Deputy Defence Minister saying they want to bring it down to about 100,000 people by about 2030 from the current uh, 200 or 250,000 people. So that's again uh, a positive sign. But I mean, uh, Faraz, one of the biggest issues we have yeah. is in, in the state sector is our very lavish and generous overtime policy, which no minister, no secretary to a ministry, they will never ever want to touch on this. It's impossible because if you look at the uh, the, I mean. I mean, the, and this is obvious for us because for who are the people who are fighting uh, for these higher taxes? It's not just the uh, executives and the professionals and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, people who are paid high salaries. Yeah. You see people who are at, even at the lowest levels because why now they are getting caught into the tax net? Because of their very uh, uh, high overtime payments, what they receive on a monthly basis. Yes. So, uh, so that is something that the government definitely needs to uh, look at. But uh, one thing on the on the revenue side yeah. is that we have to bring this the village economy, the black economy, the informal economy. All of them have to be brought into the tax net. I mean, there's if you don't do that, uh, I mean, uh, th there'll be further agitation because it's a very small number of people who are paying taxes and they're getting taxed over and over again. Mm. Because it's the easiest thing to do because they are already uh, in the net. So expand in the net. How do you do that? I'll give you a simple example for us. Today, the, the destination that you go for a holiday that most of the people used to do was, you know, places like Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia, Bangkok. Yeah. I mean, those days you would do that for 60, 70,000. Today, economic class, the, what you call the cattle class, is now about 200, 250,000 rupees a ticket. Yes. So, if, so who can afford a ticket like that if you're not if you're not a taxpayer? If you're not earning hundred thousand rupees, you think you can pay two hundred thousand rupees and buy a ticket to go to Singapore? You can't. So that means technically everyone who is traveling should have a, should be paying taxes today. So there are there are easy ways of getting them into the net. So you need to identify how do we do this? Everyone who is who is uh, running a motorcycle today has to be paying tax. If you're not earning hundred thousand rupees. You cannot afford to run a motorcycle. You can't afford to run a three-wheel if you're not earning 100,000 rupees. How do you pay for the insurance? How do you pay for the license fees? And how do you pay for maintenance? So what you're saying is this collection, this whole tax net business is all wrong because a lot of people, there are more people outside than there are inside. Absolutely right. So that they, all of them needs to be brought in and that needs to be done quickly. And, and one way to do that is we need, to, uh, we need to automate this process. We need to use technology. They had and Remy's. What happened to Remy's? Remy's, from what I hear, is, uh, is still not up and running. That's what I heard at one of the uh, parliamentary committee meetings recently. It was introduced in 2014, eight years running. I think we have paid a lot of money. I don't think it's still delivering the goods. In the old days, they had district offices, I think they were called. They used, they used to know their area very well. So they would be fully aware of who's earning what. And now that it's all centralized, there's a lot of people out there who are not in the net. But they're all running, like you say, you know, they've got a scooty, they've got a motorbike, um, they've got a tractor. They're and running so a small on. shop. They're running a small shop. And they're all, by and large, remaining out of the, uh, the tax net. That's right. So that is one. So we need to enhance the tax net. So second, second one for us is that there are a lot of exemptions what we have given uh, 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 in, this, uh, in, in the tax law. So yeah. I think all those exemptions need to be taken out because you need to simplify the whole process. That's the only way out on this. Simplify the process. So remove the exemptions. Yeah. I mean, your income would go up significantly when this, uh, that's number two. Yeah. The other thing, Farad, I don't know whether you know the statistics. So for Samurdi, believe it or not, I was told the cost of administering the Samurdi payout yeah. is about 35 to 40%. Wow. So if, you, if the Samurdi allocation is 100 rupees from the budget, but 40 rupees goes simply for the people who are um, uh, administering. administering it. I mean, it's crazy. <coughs> I can't understand why it can't be just uh, sent uh, to their bank accounts. 
on a on a sort of policy level, how can you increase um, customs duty, which is a huge uh, revenue side, when you've banned so many imports? Correct. So that's the that's a downside of when when imports are banned. Faraz, you're spot on on that. Is that as as soon as you I mean when uh, whether it's white goods when you say white goods you know it's like fridges, televisions you know things like that. Uh, any other personal effects to motor vehicles, you know, when all these things are banned, I mean, your customs revenue goes down, uh, goes down big time. So if you look at last year, yes. actually the customs revenue is, uh, was the highest revenue earner, $641 billion Right. out of 1457 But billion. this year it must be at least half that. So that's the problem. So, so it's, a, it's a double-edged sword, it is. You know, as soon as you ban imports, you, ha you have this problem. But one other thing which we need to do on customs uh, for us, yeah simplify the system because now the problem is you have different tax uh, duty slabs and when you do that there is opportunity for you to uh, manipulate the system so simplify the system so that everyone i mean uh, there are uh, there are many countries you simply have one one uh, duty rate uh, mm. for us. so whatever you bring you br you bring your you buy your you bring your tie you bring uh, glassware it's the same rate mm. so, th so there's very little for you to manipulate the system and these cards that are being played uh, played now, um, they, they they show you uh, the different things where we expect our, you know, like you said earlier, I think people will pay tax, corporates will pay their taxes, um, but they really want to have some accountability as to what is happening to those taxes. Absolutely right, Faran. It has to be transparent. They need to know what is happening at the moment. The the, the biggest problem with the taxpayer. The, People understand they have to pay more taxes. Corporates understand they have to pay more taxes. I mean, at the Ports Authority, why do we, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, have several times more people than the private operators? If they send about five, if they keep about 5,000 home, they'll save on the three meals they're supposed to give them when they're on duty. You know, and that's a lot of money. You're talking about two billion plus. You know, so so that that's a lot of money. For us, so you're right. That's why. Why do we need 1.5 billion public sector employees for a, such a small country uh, such as ours? I mean, it's. I mean, we need to. I mean, I would like to hear from the government. Is this is our plan? By 2030, we are going to bring it down to a million people. Every year, we will take 100,000 off. Apparently, you and I each have got. 16 public servants for each of us. So between the two of us, we've got 32. That, I think that includes the army. <laughs> so, so that's the issue. So, so that's the plan. That India has got 277 or something. Correct. So that's the plan for us that we want. We want from the government to say, right, we understand you're paying more taxes. Uh, other side of the bargain, we will, bring, we will cut expenditure. We will reduce the, the public sector, the number of employees. We will we'll take 50,000 every year for the next 10 years. We want that commitment. That commitment is not there uh, for us from the government. Mm. There's nothing to say they will cut down expenditure. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I, I just want to say that, uh, that we also have several messages about uh, the uh, recent uh, uh, compensation order made by the Supreme Court. Um, in my view, um, those seven judges who were who made up the bench, who made that decision. Uh, and the decision was unanimous, 7-0. Seven, seven, all seven agreed. And I think we ought to call them the patriotic seven, because they have taken Sri Lanka into uncharted territories. They have let us all know that the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka is not going to be constrained by the rigidity of precedence. And they have unafraid and without any uh, with, with a lot of thought, they have taken Sri Lanka to a different place where public officials, people entrusted with the public's best interests must deliver. And if they don't, they will have to pay. And that's the way it was. Um, Mr. Mudlige, thank you very much for being on News 9 Live. We much appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me. And that's the way it was on News 9 Live this evening. Take care. Have a great evening as much as you can. Uh, I hope you're not dwelling too much on the payslip. Um, in the meantime, it's now time for the primetime news. And as always, God bless you all.